Hello everyone, this is Roshni again and I welcome you all to my channel Circuit Globe. Today's session is based on resistors and their serial and parallel combinations. So guys, let's proceed. A resistor is a passive component that is used to resist or oppose the flow of charge carriers. We all know that movement of charge carriers generates current. So we can say that resistor is a device that resists the flow of current through a device. It is said to be a passive device because it does not contain any power source despite used to reduce the level of voltage or current across it. Let's see the symbolic representation of resistor. It can either be represented in the form of zigzag lines or just a small square box. The property by which the resistivity of a resistor is measured is known as resistance and its unit is ohm. Now a question arises what an ohm of resistance is? So basically an ohm is the resistance offered by a resistor when a current of 1 ampere is passed through it with a voltage drop of 1 volt across its terminals. And this definition is the outcome of expression R is equals to V by I. And this relation is derived from Ohm's law which states that voltage across a conductor is directly proportional to the current. That is we can say V is directly proportional to I. On adding proportionality constant we get V is equals to IR. Here R is the resistance of the conductor that act as proportionality constant over here. Let's now understand what are the types of resistors. So resistors are mainly classified into three categories fixed type, variable type and special type. Fixed type resistors are very common as they have fixed value of resistance whereas a variable type resistance provides adjustable value of resistance and this adjustable value is usually provided through mechanical movement. Potentiometer and rheostat are the example of variable type of resistors while special type of resistors are those whose resistance depends on physical quantities like LDR, VDR, thermistors etc. Types of resistors is a large domain to discuss. So we can generalize this explanation by discussing some common general purpose resistors which are carbon resistors, metal film resistors and wire wound resistors. Carbon resistors are basically low cost general purpose resistors and it is made from carbon and clay composition. The ratio in which carbon and clay are mixed determines the resistive value of the resistor. In case of carbon resistors, it is always said that higher the composition of carbon, lower will be the resistance value. The composed mixture is molded into a cylindrical shape, the two ends of which are attached to metallic wires. When we talk about metal film or carbon film resistors, then these type of resistors are formed by the deposition of pure metal like nickel or oxide film like tin oxide onto an insulating or glass substrate. In this case, the thickness of the deposited film decides the resistive value of the resistor and these are very small in size. Further, when we talk about wire wound resistors, it is found when a certain length of metal alloy wire is wounded onto an insulating cylindrical core. The wire of materials like nichrome, constantin or manganin are generally used. A coating of insulating material like baked enamel is coated over the wire wound resistors. Till now we have discussed the basic idea of resistors. But is there any way to find out the resistance offered by multiple resistors in a single circuit? And the answer to this question is a big yes because the combination in which resistors are placed determines the equivalent resistance offered by them. In any circuit, resistors are placed either in serial, parallel or mixed serial parallel combinations. Therefore, we can find the equivalent resistance of the combination of resistors. So let's move further and first understand the series combination of resistors. Consider the circuit shown here. In series combination, all the resistors are connected in series with respect to each other and same current flows through all of them. As we can see, I is the current that is flowing through all of these resistances. However, a different potential that is V1, V2 and V3 for this particular circuit is existing between these three resistors. Suppose we form an equivalent circuit of the given circuit in which all the resistive values of these resistors gets combined as shown here and all these resistances will give rise to this particular R in equivalent circuit. 
the equivalent resistance of multiple resistors in series is given as the sum of all the resistors in series combination and now you must be thinking how can we say that so let's understand how can we get this equivalent resistance as series combination of resistors as we can see that potential difference existing between point a and d in total is v volts but the voltage drops across each resistance is different that is v1 v2 and v3 and we know in serial combination the current flowing through all of them is same therefore the drops across each resistor will depend on the individual value of resistances so we can say the total voltage drop across the two ends of the circuit will be equal to the sum of individual voltage drops in the circuit which is given by v is equals to v1 plus v2 plus v3 and by ohm's law we know that v is equals to i into r therefore on substituting the value we'll get v is equals to i r1 plus i r2 plus i r3 and we know that the current is same in each of the case now if we substitute the current and resistance of equivalent circuit equals to the product of i and r of the series circuit we will get i r is equals to i of r1 plus r2 plus r3 where we have taken the common term out and hence the current will get cancelled from each of the side and we'll get r is equals to r1 plus r2 plus r3 friends let's now understand parallel combination of resistors consider the circuit shown here comprising of three resistors r1 r2 and r3 connected in parallel across which a voltage of v volts is supplied we know in parallel combination same potential exists between different branches but the current that is flowing through each branch is different therefore the total current i gets divided into i1 i2 and i3 for this particular circuit suppose we convert this particular circuit into an equivalent circuit comprising of only a single resistor which is shown here therefore the equivalent resistance of the resistors connected in parallel will be given as 1 upon r is equals to 1 upon r1 plus 1 upon r2 plus 1 upon r3 let's now check how we have achieved this by now it is already clear to you that total current i is getting divided into i1 i2 and i3 across the circuit therefore we can write it as i is equals to i1 plus i2 plus i3 we know ohm's law states that v is equals to i into r therefore a modified version of ohm's law will give the value of current in terms of voltage and resistance so writing this equation in the form of voltage and resistance we'll get v upon r is equals to v upon r1 plus v upon r2 plus v upon r3 here this is the current flowing in the equivalent circuit and these three are the currents flowing in individual branch of the parallel circuit okay as the voltage in parallel combination is same so different current flowing through each branch will depend on different value of resistances present in that particular branch on simplifying we'll get v upon r is equals to v of 1 upon r1 plus 1 upon r2 plus 1 upon r3 and cancelling the common terms we'll get 1 upon r is equals to 1 upon r1 plus 1 upon r2 plus 1 upon r3 So in this way one can easily find the equivalent resistance offered by multiple resistors in a circuit. So friends this is all for today. I hope this session will help you. So please like this video, share this with your friends and don't forget to subscribe our channel for further updates. I'll be back with another interesting topic. Till then take care. Bye bye.